to Overtime Hockey Talk. My name is Mark Paul. My co-host Justin Baker and I ready to count down the new year with you by listing off our top line of the decade along with the top three teams and the top three moments. This is about to get so heartfelt. I expect to feel your tears through your podcast listening app. That's descriptive. If only you could, you know, and see, you know, you can always like follow and you can like someone like people's things on their podcast sometimes. If only you could send heartfelt tears. Wow. You know, really make it interactive. Facebook's got the sad emoji, but like what about crying tears of joy? <laughs> Cuz the guy laughing and crying, that's not like that's not a tears that's not like a tears of joy laughter. That's that's like a forced emotion. That's something that like the crying yes, happens. Yes, so. there needs to be a like I'm not actually sad. I'm incredibly touched. But you can't have an emoji that says touched. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be Kevin Spacey's picture. Oh, and then you'll have to commit suicide. Oh, okay. So on to hockey. Uh, you know, this is, we're, we're just, I mean, obviously there's a ton going on in, in the, the sport itself. Uh, finally, nobody's been fired since our last show, which is a miracle. Uh, nobody's been fired. Nobody's been traded, but that's because they're forced not to. Right. Because <laughs> of the Christmas break. Uh, you know, I, I think we're, I, I think we just jump right into, to what we have to talk about. Unless there's something that you really want to nail, uh, before we, before we jump into it. No, no, I'm good. Okay. Let's do it. All right, so uh, let's. Shall we start off with our top line? Why not? I think that's a great place to start. So, uh, how did you do your top line? Did you just take the top three forwards, like forward one, two, three, and then a couple defensemen, or are we? And then obviously a goaltender, uh, or did you like pure right wing, pure left wing? Yeah, I did pure right wing, pure left wing. Because I mean, let's be honest, it would be easy to throw in three centers, right? And sure. Sure. would definitely make it a little bit more challenging sure. if you're doing it by position. So um, I had a little bit more fun with it that way. And uh, yeah, so pure left, pure right. And Okay, so let's start on the back end and move Beautiful. our way forward. So, you know, everybody likes to start in the back back end. Wow, uh, this show's going dark and deep. Let's start with your goaltender. Uh, <laughs> now, there, there's there been a bunch of lists thrown out there, of course. Like everyone's done their all-decade team Uh we, you know, actually, you suggested doing an all-decade team before I even saw anybody doing all-decade teams. It's just we actually decided to do our show when the decade was actually ending. You right, bastards, putting out your all-decade team in on December eighteenth. I mean, come on, that's that's early. Yeah, you got twelve days left to go, thirteen days left to go in the decade. Premature. Right? Do you know listing. how much could change? <laughs> do you know how much can change? Okay. Uh, so let's go with your goaltender. Let's go with it. Uh, mine is the King Henry Lundqvist. Okay. Was there any debate? No, I think a little bit of me leaned towards Mark Andre Fleury, okay. and I threw in Jonathan Quick in there too because, of course, they do have the the Stanley Cup rings where Lundqvist sure. doesn't. Um, however, the guy was just so dominant through the decade. I mean, you look at a lot of his stats; he's just he's rocking nine twenties all through the boards that whole decade almost it seems like and at, at a few points he was just carrying that team on his back to a Stanley Cup final I mean, and, they, yeah they went to the finals because so, of him. they went to the conference finals a couple times because right because of him I mean he carried that team so many times and of course he does have the Vesna, which is always nice to to throw a little hardware in there too so sure yeah uh Henrik Lundqvist was was like I was debating all right do I go Henrik Lundqvist who's been incredibly consistent hasn't necessarily had the playoff success through the decade. But then the other goalie that I would have considered who had his unbelievable, like heart trophy winning season, the only goaltender to win the heart trophy this decade is Carey price. Uh, He didn't win a Stanley cup. He did win a gold medal, which I, you know, I, I suppose we can sort of count that a little bit. Yeah. I thought about those a little bit too. but, uh, But at the same time, I, I, this is the NHL. So, that's that maybe we'll leave the gold medal off the shelf. Uh, but Carey Price, he hasn't had any playoff success. Like it's not like we're si- we're seeing the Canadians in the in the conference finals or anything like that. So uh, I it's it's hard for me to look at Price and, and put him in the same realm. Then you talked Mark Andre Fleury. He's he's been a guy who to me when he's on Pittsburgh beginning of this decade actually. 
remember he had his faults against the Flyers. There were some early round, like first round exits by the Penguins, and many people were pointing the finger at Marc Andre Fleury, saying, eh, "Maybe you know, maybe he's he's lost it. Like, you know, he had this, he had his cup run, and maybe he's just more of like a, I don't know, he's he's needs needs a change or something." And he he really reinvented himself in in a way. Like he had to re he had to find himself again and. He went from this young stud goalie to all right. Now you're a veteran and you're struggling. And like, what are you going to do about it? Uh, but always consistent in the regular season. And what he did going from Pittsburgh, and I mean, the year that after or before he left, he of course he basically without Mark Andre Fleury, the Penguins don't win that cup. Of course not. So he takes them a couple games shy of of getting to the Stanley Cup final, and then of course Matt Murray takes over, but. I think that what he was able to do in the regular season and the playoffs and then take a team that had no business, <laughs> frankly, even making the playoffs. Like, nobody thought that team would make the playoffs. And without him, look at what would have happened in their goaltending situation that year. You've got Malcolm Subban and uh, all these other random guys bouncing around, and nobody was really playing great. Marc-Andre Fleury comes back in, plays, what did he, how many games did he play down the stretch? It was like he was Who playing knows? every game. Yeah. And they win their division. Where did they win the division? Yeah, they won the yeah. division. And they go to the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, the following year, he's just as good. It just, they happen to get skunked out by the Sharks in in the weirdest little play, or, uh, penalty call that actually causes a rule change. So for me, my goaltender of this decade is Marc-Andre Fleury. Uh, because of what he did in the regular season and what he was able to accomplish in the playoffs. I respect it. So. And I think, too, I read somewhere, um, well, I shouldn't say read somewhere, but I, I put it together, and he has the most wins of the decade of any goaltender. Beauty. So which is just always a plus. Yeah, yeah. And, and that that's, he's on a great team. Oh, absolutely. The entire decade. Yeah. But he switches teams and makes the new team a team to, like, a team to, to be terrified of. Right. So <laughs> I, I think just based on that, uh, Lundqvist had some was much better in the beginning of the decade as opposed to the second half. Whereas Flurry, really, there's been, yeah, he's he had a couple playoff series where he wasn't great. But you can't, you're not looking at an entire year and going, wow, Flurry was terrible that whole year. It, it really didn't happen. No, never. Lundqvist did have some like down year, sure, big time stretches where he was pretty rough. And so I, I think based on that, I'm going with my boy Mark Andre Flurry. Okay. All right, on to the defense. Ooh, staying in the back. Are you going end. a left a left handed defenseman and a right handed defenseman? Or are you just like two defensemen? Two defensemen. Okay. I do. Right. Yeah. I I mean, when you looked at I, both my guys are right handers, by the way. But <clears throat> when I looked at all the defensemen, like I I didn't even that didn't cross my mind okay. because right. you know one of both these guys Who just gives a rip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Only <laughs> Mike Babcock, <laughs> and he's not coaching the NHL. See ya. All right. Uh, first guy on my list on defense, Eric Carlson. Didn't make my list. Didn't make just your list. Kidding. He absolutely <laughs> made my list. <laughs> if he isn't on to your lose list, it. then just go and go oh find go find some other sport to follow because you obviously have no idea what you're watching. Yeah, you talk about a guy who is consistently a Norris favorite. I mean, over the the decade, he finished first in the Norris voting twice, right. got second place once um, or twice. I'm sorry. Um, and this guy just, to me, was on the back end probably the biggest game changer of anybody on the back end yeah, throughout the decade. Yeah. And Indeed. still can be, but un- unfortunately, he's just, he hasn't looked like himself this this year, but he's had flashes of it. But, you know, San Jose is just a giant mess of its own, so yeah. we won't even talk about that. But outside of this year, he's just he's just been dominant and just almost at a point-per-game pace, which for defense is just incredible. So to me, he is one of the top two defensemen of that decade. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I would agree. He is, sure. he, and I, I really like my two choices for defense because they are so incredibly different. Because my other defenseman is Zidona Chara. Zidona Chara, okay. He is my other defenseman of the decade. And granted, of course, towards the end of this decade, he has, he's not winning a Norris Trophy right now. He did win a Stanley Cup, and I think it's fair to say that like he was. I mean, he's the guy that led that team to the Stanley Cup. Patrice Bergeron was coming into his own, yes, but Zidono Chara was he was unstoppable, and he did win a Norris Trophy, and uh, was was up for others. And I, I just Zidono Chara, 
There has never been anyone like him. There will never be anyone like him, probably for our entire lifetime. Yeah, I think when you get into guys of his size, it's so hard to be. How, how big is he, Justin? He's got to be seven foot. I mean, good Lord. <laughs> Six nine. Oh, yeah. For I mean, of a guy his size, right? He, he still moves his feet pretty well. And I think as fast as the NHL is going, it's going to be harder and harder for guys you know, of that size yeah. and caliber to really keep up with the well, game. And a guy who's six foot nine doesn't play hockey. Right. You get pushed to basketball or you, you get pushed do. to like if you're if you're in the US, yeah, you're or, or Europe even, you're getting pushed to basketball or you're getting pushed even to football. Yeah, but that's but that's even too big for football. Like he's just he's almost too it's like basketball or bust when you're that tall in general. Sure. No, I I get that. And I think too in today's NHL, right? You're not about grinding and pounding guys into the boards right. anymore. So, you know, but he has evolved with the game, and that's has. what's so impressive is that a guy who is not exactly built for this era, especially the last maybe four or five years, he has managed to continue to be a number one defenseman. Boston has certainly done a great job at at putting him into a place where he can succeed. Yeah, But, I mean, hey, you don't have to look further than the standings where they're second in the NHL and or, or third in the NHL in points right now, and he is – their number one defenseman. Yeah. Like there's there's no deny he's still fantastic. He may not be in your top five anymore, but I think you know, you're taking him over he's probably maybe in the top fifteen defenseman still in the National Hockey League. Maybe top twenty. So the the fact that he's in his forties and we're still talking about him as and he spent this entire decade in his thirties. And to me, he may not be on everyone's top two, but he's got to be in your top five for this decade in terms of defensemen. And to be on that list in your 30s the whole time, that time when you're supposed to be on a decline, right? <laughs> I, I I don't think there's any, any doubt that uh, he's fantastic. Yeah, so he definitely was, I mean, if you want to talk about my three and four defensemen, he was right there in that category, along with sure. Duncan Keith, who was another guy that I yep, really yep, wanted I to put in. I considered him. I just didn't think that the last five years that he'd been effective enough right. to really. Uh, but the guy who made my, my other... My other defenseman was Drew Doughty. I think, honestly, yep, there was pick. probably a three- or four-year stretch where he was the best defensive player in the game, but he has such a good offensive upside to him. I think, you know, again, he's, he's got the Norris. Maybe not a year he completely deserved it, but it was kind of like one of those, like with uh, what's-his-face, um, Denzel Washington when he got an Oscar for training day. Maybe not his best movie, but it was kind of like, okay, this guy's earned it by now. Yeah. Let's just give it to him. Toss him a... Toss him a one. Yeah, and I think yeah. that was the case with Drew Doughty, but he's just, I mean, the couple, he's got a couple cups, you know, and he was always just dominant in both of those Stanley Cup runs. He led yep. all defensemen in points one year during that, and um, I think he, he led all players with 12 assists during the other one. So he was he was just everywhere and just, just such a beast physically, defensively, and offensively. No one's no one's going to... Gonna fight you on Drew Doughty no. being on a list of top <laughs> defensemen. Uh, okay, well let's roll up to uh, we'll roll up to the next the next most important defensive position, and that's the center. The center. Ooh, you're let's, going big. Let's go right to the center. I like it. I think you and I probably have the same guy, but it's Sidney Crosby for me. Absolutely, Sidney Crosby on in the center position, the yeah. center hole. <laughs> so this center hole. Yeah, I mean I've I've actually seen some a couple lists where guys try to argue for Connor McDavid, but the guy hasn't been playing that long. He hasn't been playing that long, and he has literally been to the playoffs one freaking time. Right. And granted, that's not his fault. But, 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 it is his fault. I guess, yeah. If you I want mean, to say it that way, you, sure. You're on the team. <laughs> and, and so if everyone has to share some responsibility as to why you didn't make it, I, I guess you got to, like, there has to be blame somewhere. You got to take some responsibility for why why your team didn't win that game by one goal, or like, yeah, you could have gone out there and scored. It's like it's harsh and 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 probably not uh, not super realistic. But in, at the same time, Crosby willed some of those teams, <laughs> he did. along with Matt Murray and Mark Andre Fleury. Sure. There, there's no doubt that like you can you can't do it on your own in hockey. This isn't like Cowie Leonard willing an entire country to their first national basketball association championship right but yeah it's, uh, it, it's still I, I the guy is just always there yeah and what i loved best about him was he started the decade scoring 50 goals getting that richard trophy right 
And you just watch his game slowly evolve into more of a two-way guy, but still putting up 30, 40 goals. He's still top five in scoring I know. every year. And it's just it's fantastic year. to watch because, again, the guy has developed his game in such a way. I'm just like, this guy is freak. Like, he's, he makes it very hard for me to want to be like, who's the better center right now, McDavid or Crosby? And he still puts himself in that argument because he's just so good, both scoring and, you know, on his own end of the ice defensively. Yeah. Yep. And, and still at this point, a one season, one off, you get one player. I might take Crosby. I'm, yeah. take, I'm, I'm taking Crosby over McDavid. Yeah. For, for sure. one season, one player. Go Take me to the playoffs. Let's see who's. McDavid has not proven that anyone's going to follow him. Crosby has proven that anyone will follow him. <laughs> like literally everyone, everyone gets behind the guy. Yeah. I, I There's a reason he captained that, that, uh you know, that Olympic sure. team. I mean, sure. Okay, uh, so there's the center position. We both have Sidney Crosby there. Uh, let's move to. Uh, okay, let's let's go wingers. Yeah. Let's now, did you left, do let's left, left and right or uh, sort of? Okay, sort of. I mean, the guy in my left wing position can be considered a right winger, but it's Alex Ovechkin okay. for me. Okay. Yeah. And if you put anybody different, I will walk out of here right uh, now. No, I, I do have Alexander Ovechkin. Okay, that's good. Yeah. I mean. What's, How what's could you not? <laughs> the guy finally gets his cup last year. Phenomenal way to cap off part of a decade for this guy. And then, of course, he just he lights it up offensively every single year. I mean, he's got four, let's see, yeah, 550 goal seasons in the decade here. Insane. Uh, just ridiculous. Like seven. And what, what does Richard one other trophies? person have a 50 goal season in this decade? Crosby. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it? Nobody else had 50 goals. I don't think so. Yeah. He, uh, yeah, won the Richard with 51, 50, 53, 51. So, okay. What do you what can you say there? Uh and of course the one year Crosby won it, he had one more goal than Ovechkin. <laughs> right. So, right. yeah. Uh yeah, I don't think there's any doubt Ovechkin deserves to be there. He's he has all the hardware, he has the cup, he the, it's it's him, no doubt. Um right side since there's really not much to, <laughs> it's Ovechkin. Right. Uh so I did something a little different than you. Okay. Please. I put Connor McDavid on the right side. Interesting. Because I will say he does play the wing quite a bit. And he, he comes over there and... We and, have talked about this. Dry know, Seidel takes the yeah, face-offs the majority yeah. of the time, sure. So what I did was I said, okay, now I can... Uh, I created a lineup where I said, all right, I want Connor McDavid in there. If I have, if I have uh, let's say, four forwards... I'm going to take Connor McDavid and he's going to be in there the regular, but I could pull my goalie and I get Patrick Kane coming off the bench Yeah, as Kane my or- fourth, as my like traditional right wing. Sure. Either that or you can have Patrick Kane out there and you can pull the goalie and you can have Connor McDavid come out when the goalie's pulled. So either way, I'm completely happy. Uh, my, my one, I guess maybe I'll pull back. Patrick King can be in my right wing slot. He actually played the entire decade. Yeah, he was my choice for so, right winger. And yeah. out of every forward in the National Hockey League over the course of the decade, he had the most points. Yeah. yeah. Which is which and, quite and surprising. He, he was the healthiest. He was. That's, That's why that, like Crosby, yeah. remember Crosby basically missed 18 months of this decade. Right. Yeah. And and, and plus you add on maybe the, you know, drop in a bucket games that he missed throughout the years. Patrick Kane almost he did he miss? He missed maybe one chunk of games. I feel like. Did he miss a uh, like twenty games or something like that? Yeah, in fourteen fifteen, he he only played for sixty one. Yeah. Year before that, sixty nine. But other than that, he's been yeah healthy which, as which, a dog. I mean, yeah, you you miss you miss. Of course, over the course of an entire decade, if you miss forty games, you're you're really you're missing like an average of what like five four games a, a year, right. which is which is fine. Uh, you're not going to play a decade in the league and and not get hurt unless you're very lucky. Yeah, like and a Patrick Marlowe or something oh like my that. Where gosh, you just, yeah, and and at that, in which case you're probably a guy who's floating around. Like no, no one is surprised that Phil Kessel doesn't get hurt, right? Because he doesn't he, go into any dangerous <laughs> areas. Uh, okay, well, if you were going to pull the goalie, you bring it out McDavid. Though? Yeah, I think at that, that point you have okay. to bring out McDavid. Sure. All right, beautiful. Well, there's our uh, there's our lineup. That's pr- pretty similar. Yeah, just the the couple defensemen being swapped there, and uh, maybe the, and the goaltender, but for the most part. Um, okay, well let's let's move on to we'll we'll save top three moments for the end. Okay, I think that beautiful. 
that one's uh you know the tearjerker i i'm gonna need to run and grab a box of Kleenex. okay yeah because i think my number one moment's gonna make you cry okay yeah. all right perfect um well let's do our top three teams we didn't actually really throw out any any kind of like a caveat like here's here's top three teams as in like hey the pittsburgh penguins are my top is one of my top three teams of the decades because they won two stanley cups and they did this and that or it was it did you do like the 2015 16 pittsburgh penguins is my top? yeah i, I did that okay that's yeah. what i did too okay. okay just making sure i i think if we went top three teams of the decade just like oh i just, the microphone. I just smacked the microphone uh <laughs> because i talk with my hands uh if we did top three teams of the decade, I think you would just go like probably Pitts like in any order, Pittsburgh, LA, Chicago. Sure. Yeah. Because they won what out Almost of out of the ten of the cups, cups, they won seven of them. Right. The only ones you have left in there, Boston has one, St. Louis has one, and Washington. Washington yeah. has one. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the top three teams of the decade, and this is an individual squad from a particular year, and you're number three. Number team. three for me is a team that did not win a Stanley Cup, which is shocking. I think, you know, when you start talking about top teams, maybe you yeah. have to be like, yeah. they have to win a cup, right? Well, for me, it's the 1819 Vegas Golden Knights. Okay. Yeah, I think right. mostly because one, the excitement they brought into the NHL when they came in, right? Like, just the fanfare that came along with it. And then two, they make it to the Stanley Cup freaking finals. Yes. Their yes. inaugural year, they went on just a, they were killing teams, surprised everybody right out of the gate. I don't think anybody. I think was you mean ex- the 17, 18. Right. I'm sorry. What did I say? Sorry. You said 18, 19. Right, right. right. I'm sorry. Yeah. 17, 18. Uh, yeah. Their, their inaugural season winning the Stanley Cup. And I mean, dude, they just ran over everybody in the playoffs, which just, they played so fast, so ferocious. You know, that top line with Wild Bill Carlson. Uh, you know Smith and uh, what's his face on the on the wing there, uh, Marsh or so. I'm sorry. Yep. Um, they were just they were fun to watch. Just a lot of fun. Not to mention your top goalie of the decade, Mark Andre Fleury, was lights out that season yep. and in the playoffs. Yep. Just unreal. I think what was it that uh, that second? Or if that they had first, gone to Game Seven, I think he would have won the Conn Smythe. You think so? I think so. That's possible. Yeah. yeah. I think I think Ovi willed that team to win the cup, but. You know, again, I I think they just got behind, you know, this, there was just something about that team that like chip on their shoulder type players, just everybody was cast off, you know, kind of thing. It was just fun to watch. And they they proved that it wasn't a one-off either. Right. Yeah. They're still doing it. Weird little, they made it and yeah. Uh, Okay. Well, my number three is also a team that did not win the Stanley Cup. Interesting. Okay. And they actually are from 2018, 19. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) It is the Tampa Bay Lightning of 2018-19. Very nice. That wins 62 regular season games and is one of the few teams in the decade to score over 300 goals. And 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 frankly, they were like in the bottom of the league in terms of goals against as well. An unbelievable 82-game stretch. We just ignore the next four. <laughs> just the next four. Uh, they won 62 games, and there has been teams in this decade that have won the Stanley Cup and have won still won less games than that Tampa Bay Lightning team won. Yeah, I mean, I.e. the, the St. Louis Blues last yeah. year actually won less games than the Tampa Bay Lightning. They won 61 games, <laughs> which is insane. <laughs> and, Tampa Bay did, and Tampa Bay did it over 82 games. It's, it's crazy. Such a good team, and they something happens. I don't know what in the in there and that's it yeah that's that so and and you know the they won 56 games in regulation and overtime so still doesn't compare to the red wings in in 95 96 when they won 62 and they there was ties so the lightning essentially had six extra opportunities and they won six games in a shootout but that's not their fault so and and teams are playing playing for things differently but anyways uh that team unbelievable and i think that despite them completely faltering i think that i would have like if you took that team in the finals against some of the other teams that have won the cup i think a lot of people would take that tampa bay team yeah like on paper at least yeah 
But yeah, I I think if they had, had a maybe, bad four game stretch. Yeah, I I think maybe had they made a little bit more of a push in the playoffs, a little bit further, I would have put them on this list in my top three for sure. But that those four games, just, four games, <laughs> I crushed them. Crushed, yeah. Okay, let's go. Uh, your number two team of the decade. Yeah, number two was last year's Cup winner, the St. Louis Blues. St. Louis Blues. Yeah, a I recency bias there. I think. But. I maybe. <laughs> You know what? I, I looked at this team and I thought the story of just being in last place and just completely turning it around to me. And it's not like it was a one off either because that success is still rolling on this season. But just the fact that you look at this team on paper, right? And there's not anybody outside of maybe Tarasenko who you look at and you could say this guy's a game changer. This guy's just going to like a Connor McDavid, a Sidney Crosby, or even, you know, during those Chicago years when you had Patrick Kane and even Jonathan Taves to some extent, you know, that could just put up points at a, you know, a point per game pace sometimes. They didn't have any of that on this team. Their leading point score for the year was Ryan O'Reilly, who didn't even hit a point per game pace in an NHL, you know, era where, you know, scoring is going up consistently. But to me, I love the story of Jordan Bingington, a guy who was basically loaned to the Bruins AHL team that says, yeah, you're you're a fourth or fifth goaltender where we don't really give a crap. And then he just comes in and is like, I love that interview where they're asking him, like, hey, are you you nervous? He's like, look at me. Do I look nervous? Like, giant middle awesome. finger. Awesome. Yeah, that was phenomenal. And the guy was just ice in his veins the whole entire playoffs. He did have a couple games where it's like he let in five or six goals, I think, one against San Jose and another, you know, in the finals there. But for the most part, he was phenomenal. And Ryan O'Reilly just put on a show defensively. Um, you know, and offensively too. He 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 lit it up. So they were a fun team to watch for me. And I I really enjoyed watching them. At least the second half of the season after Yo went. So So my my number two is a, is a team from a little while ago. Okay. Uh the twenty twelve thirteen Chicago Blackhawks. What I think is the best Chicago Blackhawks team that won the cup in this decade. Uh, this is the shortened season, but they went, uh, if, if you remember, they, this is the year, like in the very beginning of the year, they, they just ran off. It was like close to, I think it was like 18 straight games that they won to start the season. Yeah. Yeah. Or no, like, I think it was like, like without, 24 without losing, without regulation. losing, without yeah. losing. Yeah. It's crazy. They finished 36, seven and five in the regular season. Of course, you know, 48 game season or 48 games. And remember scoring was lower, like to get a point per game back in, in 2013 it was imp- was like you were if you were a 90 point guy you were probably leading the league in scoring <laughs> right Jamie Ben <laughs> and Patrick Kane leads the league with 55 points that year and they come into the playoffs and when you look at who ha- who they had to play in those playoffs uh they of course they roll through the the Minnesota Wild that actually was they were a pretty decent team uh, this is before the playoffs had changed like this was still the old divisions and they they still did the 1-8 stuff uh, that Minnesota Wild team, still a pretty decent team. But they they roll through them, beat them in five games. Then they have to come up against the Detroit Red Wings, a team that was a favorite for the Stanley Cup that year. That was kind of their, like, this is our last hurrah right. kind of year. And the Red Wings get up 3-1 in that series. And I the, hate talking about this. I, I'm sorry. I, thought, <laughs> I, I know. Uh, and I think I can remember... Like Jonathan Taves getting really frustrated, and the, like the Blackhawks looked like they were falling apart. They they find their way. They come back down three one. They win in Game Seven in overtime, uh, and they move on. Then they play the Los Angeles Kings, the team that had won the Stanley Cup the year before in 2012, and they they beat them in five games. They just trucked them. They, they do win the series in double overtime, so just an epic end to that one. Uh, and then they go on to the Stanley Cup Finals. They beat the Boston Bruins in six games, and of course, it's that legendary like last couple minutes of the game where uh, where they just out of nowhere it seemed they were down two one, and blink of an eye they're up three two and they win the cup, and that was that. And I, I just think that 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 was a magical team. Uh, Corey Crawford was probably his best. His best stretch was that season, and there, there just was to me very few teams of this decade that were more compelling, that had more 
just unbelievable things happen to them. I mean, two playoff series, one in overtime, one in game seven. It's tough to beat that. But uh, I know your St. Louis Blues did the same thing this last year and in the second round as well. Uh, but that team, I would put that team up against pretty much any team in this decade and, and would expect them to come out on top. That yeah, team was phenomenal. That's fair. Pri- like prime Seabrook, prime Keith, <clears throat> Prime Taves, Prime Kane, Prime Crawford, like everyone, and that was Hosa, and you've got uh, you've got Patrick Sharp, just a phenomenal team. Yeah. Well, right. number one, number one. Who's okay. your number one? Uh, mine is the first championship for the Blackhawks. Oh, okay. Uh, the 2010 Stanley Cup champs. Well, I, I don't mean first as in their first ever, yeah, but yeah. yeah, first of the decade. Yeah, the the 2010 Cup winning Blackhawks with that ghost goal past Michael Leighton. Which I will never forget that. But crazy year. That Philadelphia Flyers team was something else. They came down back back down three three oh to the uh to the Bruins. Yeah, that was a great series. That, that but yeah, for me, I, I think this team was just so much fun to watch. They this was like the coming out party where you knew yes. these guys yes. were legit and gonna be superstars in this league. I, I remember you know, Pat, Patty Kane, even though he wasn't playing top line all the time, he was still just such a driving force for that team. And Jonathan Taves, he was just scary. And this is when he was probably, to me, coming like into his best in terms of two-way game, right? He was so so good offensively, but then defensively, you knew this guy was legit two-way player, a Selkie finalist kind of guy. Um, and not to mention just the, the, the bevy of talent they had on there. I mean, outside of goaltending, they were stacked everywhere else. You know, Niemi was kind of just like just good enough to get it done for them. But uh-huh, uh-huh. Corey Crawford, I think, got one game in there for that year. Yep. Um, but Cristobal Huey, we know, played the other half of the year, and he was just, <laughs> yeah, he was Cristobal Huey. Um, but <clears throat> when you look at the roster this team had, Taves, Kane, Sharp, Keith, Dustin Bufflin, Hosa, Versteeg, Seabrook. Versteeg, yeah. Yeah, Andrew Ladd, uh, Brian Campbell when he was just, you know, like in his prime. There was just so many guys, and I think you know Jonathan Taves. He ended up putting up, I think it was twenty nine points in twenty two playoff games, just, just so dominant. Just lights out. Yeah, this whole team was just so much fun to watch, and um, you know, you look at what they were able to do in the playoffs. This was the first time they won their division since you know the Chris Chelios era, kind of Blackhawks. Uh, you know, Taves well, set a franchise first time, first time they won the. What, did you say first time they won the cup? No, no, first time they won their division. Oh, the division, the, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, because before then it'd been all, you know, pretty right, much Detroit right. and St. Louis and, um, and, and the Blackhawks were garbage. Awful. Like yeah. their best player was Eric Daze. <laughs> right. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes, uh, no problem. Yeah. Jonathan welcome, Taves Eric. setting a franchise record too during the stretch with 12 consecutive games with a point in the playoffs. Wow. I mean, yeah. In the playoffs. That's yeah. Unreal. Beating Stan Makita's record. Uh, Hosa became the first ever player in history to do three consecutive Stanley Cups on three different teams. So that was kind of And cool finally too. won one. Yeah, finally got one. Switching and then he won teams. three. <laughs> I know. The guy could have had five cups if he had done it right. Uh, if he yeah, had just true. swapped when he was on Pittsburgh and Detroit. True story. What a one five. <laughs> so they're my number one, though. All right. Uh, that's a great number one. Uh, my number one, kind of a, kind of a cheat code, but I'm going to go 15 to 17 Pittsburgh Penguins. Oh, okay. The back Basically the same team, the only team to win back-to-back cups, but they do it in very different ways. Sure, yeah. Uh, both ways they did rely on goaltending, but they the first year, remember, they had no defense. Everyone died. <laughs> right. and no Chris, no Chris Letang, and they just willed their way to the Stanley Cup final. Uh, Sidney Crosby was unbelievable. Oh, my gosh. And so good. He win. He won both Conn Smythes, right? Fifteen and sixteen and sixteen, seventeen, didn't he? I don't remember. That's a yeah, good I looked question. that up. Goodness, uh, but that I mean, even even in the regular season, those teams like, you know, I think I think we forget how good they were in the regular season too. It's just Washington was so dominant in the regular season. You are correct. They win both of them, by the way. Right. So Pitts, I mean Pittsburgh. 104 points in 15, 16. And that was like a hampered by injuries season as well. And then 111 points the following year. So a dominant regular season team, but uh, at home in 16, 17, they were 31, six and four crazy record at home. Uh, And then, yeah, of course there are two Stanley cup runs, both time beating like just goodbye, Washington 
Washington does get the better of them the third time. The third time. <laughs> but just just an unbelievable team. Uh, I think we'll look back, not just on this decade, but all time, that like this Pittsburgh team from you know 2008 to whenever this kind of this iteration of this team ends, we're gonna look back and go like that was that was the team. You know they have less cups than the the Blackhawks. The Blackhawks had five a five year run that it was probably will be unmatched. Like it's gonna be hard to match that five year run uh, with with the town, especially with a thirty second team coming into the league. Like it's just it's only gonna get harder to win. Uh, but this this Pittsburgh team doing back to backs for the first time since ninety seven ninety eight when the Red Wings went back to back, it's uh, pretty impressive. So they are my number one team of the decade. Love it. All right. Okay. Um, well, it's on to our top three moments. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, so let's go with your number three. It's your yeah. number three moment. Number three was, I don't know if you want to call it, it was just so sweet. I just had to soak it up, and I still am soaking it up. It's watching Brad Marchand cry last year, <laughs> just losing the Stanley Cup. I <laughs> loved it so much. Uh, because I hated him when they beat Vancouver, right? I was mad about that, but he wasn't really, he wasn't really like a part of that. But he was a goon. Yeah, he, he was, was just a goon. biting yeah. fingers and just a dick during that. I knew in run. that in that Cup final when what was the freaking guy's name on Vancouver who just like he blew up a guy in Boston and like he was out. Okay, I, I think it was Game Five that he did that, and I knew as soon as it happened, I said Vancouver's gonna lose. Because of that, like it's all done. And that's exactly what happened. They ended up losing in seven. Yeah. So for me, that was my number three, just because it was so like it had come full circle just watching him lose, you know, and just losing in such a game seven type fashion where it was just like out of his control because Tuka Rask basically kind of broke Collapsed. down a little bit. Yeah. And- You're such a dick and I love it. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I had to soak that up so much. Of all the things that have happened in the last 10 years... One of Justin's most favorite things is watching another grown man cry. <laughs> My number three, uh, I actually teared up okay. but in tears of joy. My number three moment of this decade was when the Leafs won the draft lottery that secured Austin Matthews for the Toronto Maple Leafs. All right. I I think, A, I don't know if there's, like, there's there's some teams that, of course, like Vegas going to the finals was a great story and it gets attention for the NHL. But I don't think that there's a more important team to be good in the NHL than the Leafs because they draw so they bring in so much money for the league. They bring in a ton of attention. People either love the Leafs or you hate the Leafs. Most people aren't in between. Uh, but and, and a lot of people will, eh, they're, they're in a, you know, people from Detroit, actually, a lot of them like the Leafs generally like mostly because they've been bad and we've never <laughs> right. had it. We haven't had to play each other in like almost 30 years in the playoffs. So, but I, I think that it's good when the Leafs are good, uh, whether or not you like them doesn't really matter. It's just good when your big market teams are good. Like I would, I would say that it's really good for the game when Detroit's good, but there's something about Toronto and, and their, their market size. And so they get Austin Matthews, that spurs on so many things, so many good things that have happened to this organization. John Tavares going to the Leafs, Mitch Marner's emergence. And I think that that moment was the big turnaround for the Leafs. And it was it was the one thing that was out of their control. I mean, yeah, they got themselves the best odds, but still it was only 20%. There was another team with 17.5%. Like, it's not like there's you a were big guaranteed gap. by any means. Not like Cincinnati is going to get the number one pick in right. the NFL draft kind of thing. Right. Sure. So that to me is the number three. Okay. That's yeah. A little bit more personal for, for you, but yeah. I, I respect it. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, okay. Well, my number two is a guy that started the decade off by becoming the captain. No joke. Five days into the 2010 year, um, at 24 years old and just literally had so much regular season success, but just couldn't get it done. And that's Ovechkin winning the cup last year. All right. I loved it. All right. It was so reward. I've never seen anybody. I, I honestly have never seen anybody more excited. Maybe outside of Ray Bork when he won in two thousand one, but when Ray Bork won the cup in two thousand one, I 
I was so excited. I ran out. I was what, like 15. Okay. I ran out of my house, ran around it and yelling and was Dude. super excited. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, I, I hated the avalanche at that time, but it was True. it was nice yeah, to see him get it for a guy that definitely earned it. Um, yeah. But this was another guy to me who has just been, you know, outside of maybe Henry Lundquist is, was the guy that I thought most deserved a cup that just, you know, I was at, at you know, before last year, I thought he's probably never going to get one. Like, cause it, you know, you're rolling into your thirties now. Yeah. It's yeah. You've been doing it for so long. It and seemed you just, like that team's window is like real was getting, closed. Although yeah. they might win again this year. <laughs> they might, so they just still do it. Um, yeah. But you know, Starting the playoffs with Grubauer and that, I was just like, man, I don't, I don't know if this team's going to do it. Holpies look like, you know, mediocre yeah. towards the end of the year, and yeah. dude, he comes in and they rally past Pittsburgh and finally get rid of some of those demons, and then they got to play a scary Tampa Bay Lightning team in the conference finals, and yep. I'm like, yep, dude, they might just be emotionally drained so much. And I don't they know if they're going to do it. Tampa. They did. Yeah, it was great. I loved it. And then, of course, you got to play the Cinderella story, Vegas, which at that point I was like, you know what? I I think this is it's over. It's over. Yeah. It's got to be Washington. And of course, they did it in five, which was fantastic. So, um, yeah, watching Ovi do it. And then, too, it was just phenomenal, too. I don't know if you remember, they actually, you could go Google this. They were doing that lap around with the cup after everybody got their chance with it. And you just go past some girl in the first row and she's got her top off. Just. <laughs> Just nips hanging out. I was just that's your number one moment of the year. <laughs> <laughs> that's his transition to it. Number one moment of the year. Uh, uh, yeah, my number two is that's actually my number one. Okay, is, that's is phenomenal. Ovechkin, Ovechkin winning the cup. I don't, I don't think there's anyone that deserved to win it more that hadn't. Right. Um, my number two is the Pittsburgh Penguins firing their coach, hiring Mike Sullivan. Because it was in that moment that led to two Stanley Cups. And in an even bigger, like something that they could have never predicted, Mike Sullivan decides, we're going to let these guys skate. He implements the system of like a, a speed game full of forechecking. And all of a sudden, everyone goes, oh, let's go speed. And it was, I don't think it was Mike Sullivan's, I like, he didn't think, oh, if I do this, the rest of the league will catch on and like they're going to change the whole league. Yeah. He changed the whole league. Essentially, yeah. Like, I no one see was that. really doing what he was doing, at least at that great of success, because they won that first cup. People went, we need to get faster. And everyone tried to get faster. Yeah. So it, them firing, well, what was the guy's name? He was a college hockey guy and he came, came coach. The, Dan Bilesma? No, it was the next guy. I can think of his... Mike Johnston. Mike Johnston. Yeah, I yeah. wanted to say, I was like, it's not Brian Johnston. I don't know why. <laughs> Mike Johnston. They fire him. And it was at that moment that the league changed maybe forever. Yeah, I. that's 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 a good point. You don't think about it. But like, I mean, too often than none, we're, we're a copycat league where these guys won the cup. Okay, let's try to do what they're doing. Yeah. And, I mean, Anaheim Ducks, I, I was thinking about this. They thought, okay, who? So the Penguins win in 15-16. And everyone goes to speed. Right. When is the last time that there was a change like that? And I'd say that in 2007, the Ducks win the cup and they win it with these like meaty players and they, like they've got a lot of skill, but right. a lot of a lot of grit. And certain teams turn to that. Like you had the LA Kings winning a couple a couple cups. The Boston Bruins were a big mean team, but at the same time you had these. You had like the Chicago Blackhawks who were also winning cups who could grind it out with you but had a lot of skill. The Vancouver Canucks didn't win a cup, but they were they had a ton of skill and that's really what they kind of based their team around. And you see this shift from these huge big mean teams to eventually the Pittsburgh Penguins that they yeah, they can mix it up a little bit, but that's not how they were trying to win. They're trying yeah. to win pure speed. I do like the fact that Washington and St. Louis have kind of put back in a little bit of grit now, which yeah. is fun to watch, yeah. but they yeah. still got speed and, and skill, which yep. is phenomenal. Yep. Um, okay, well, so your number one's Ovechkin. Yep. My number one is a moment to me that I don't think will ever happen again in the NHL. Okay. John Scott winning the All-Star MVP. Wow, yes. yes. Yeah. In the 2015-16 season, he got written in. He was an AHL player, gets written in, well, I mean, I shouldn't say AHL, but he was playing for the, the Arizona Coyotes. He was basically a scratch every night. He maybe played 30 games that season, I think it was. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, gets written into the all-star ballot and wins, becomes because, captain. Because of the, 
It was it was the Jeff Merrick. What was their show called? It was a podcast. I can't remember the name of the podcast now. Okay, yeah, they were. It was it's like biggest hockey podcast at the time. It was Jeff Merrick and the guy that used to be at Yahoo and now he's at ESPN. Oh, Greg was just yeah, yeah. It was uh yeah Puck Daddy. That's his name. Yes. Yeah. 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 So they they decided yeah let's let's like see if we can get this guy written into the All Star yeah, game. Yeah, got voted and as the captain. This huge movement. It's so funny. Got voted as the captain for the Pacific Division, right? And the then, things that they tried to do to that guy. Right. That's the thing. They sent him down to the minors, so they tried to make him ineligible because he's an AHL player, right? Which there was no rule at the time. Which now there is. You have to be in the NHL. You can't write in AHL players anymore. Uh, then he gets traded to Montreal. Yeah. And they basically tried to. Like, let's sweep this guy under the rug. Oh, this trade has well, nothing to do with it. Well, he's not in the Pacific Division anymore, right. so he can't be the... So they let him They let him captain. They win. And you know, the, this other thing is that, like, the league basically controlled the Coyotes. They did, yeah. That's true. Yeah, forget about that. So, which maybe was the such reason they got BS. traded. <laughs> right. Hilarious. And it created such social media backlash. Uh, and just the public was just so irate about that. They end up letting him captain the Pacific team. They win. They win that million dollar check to split him on the players. And he gets named MVP, scores two goals, gets actually carried off on shoulders yes. on the ice. Just, you can't write this shit. And he, he's been approached for movie deals. And I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but it would be phenomenal. And it's just his helmet actually from the all-star game is in the hockey hall of fame too nice <laughs> it's just freaking nice. fantastic that's awesome and that's basically he played one more game with the canadians and that was his career that's he retired career. the next year why not just a way to go off in the sunset perfect yeah almost as good as winning a stanley cup but it was just it was almost. such a cool yeah. <laughs> such a cool moment when you think of like guys that could actually yeah go to the all-star game and he would be at the bottom of anybody's yeah. list well I have a I have a one B okay at all I'll throw out there. Uh, it was August 2017 when we first launched our show. Wow! So this show Love launched it. this decade, so that's got to be my one B. This is our third season, so you know it's not. We're still in our first decade, but as far as this decade is concerned, it will always be remembered as the decade that overtime hockey talk. There began. you go. There it is. There's the tearjerker moment. <laughs> All right. Well, that's our show. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, enjoy your new year. Don't be a moron. You know, get an Uber or something. Get home safe. Actually, yeah. it's a bad idea to get an Uber. Maybe just like sleep on the ground because it's really expensive to get an Uber on New Year's Eve. Well, now like, people are freaking getting abducted. And what is it? I think Uber had like... By Uber? Yeah, they had 17 cases last year of like sexual assault and all this garbage. Oh, so it's like, on. why the frick do you want to take that? But now? you could get the same thing in a taxi. That's true. Like... I mean, how many people are taking Ubers? Right. Like hundreds and hundreds of thousands. So, I mean, your chances are small. Just don't be an idiot. Just don't be an Maybe idiot. Maybe take an Uber with another person. There you go. There you go. It's problem solved. Now, no one person's going to, well, you know, unless you're really, unless it's John Scott size. Oh, person, no. Something. Not John Scott. He's not doing it. I'm going to, uh, yeah. Lives so, in Traverse City, by the way. Oh, nice. Still in Michigan, yeah. Nice. Cold as balls. Uh, well, <laughs> enjoy your new year. We will. See you next year. Yeah, uh, next decade. I can hate that joke. Oh, See boy. ya.